But I found a lot of benefit after I finished medical school and started utilizing those peptides. It's like they brought me back to life energy wise. <laughs> and one of the reasons for that is because the CJC Epimerlin really improves deep sleep. Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Amber, and we're talking all things peptides today. Somebody submitted a question that said, what is the best peptide or peptides for fatigue? And so this got my brain going. There's so many things that help fatigue. There's so many root causes of fatigue. So we're going to dive in and talk more about that today. If you have difficulty getting out of bed, you feel tired, you crash in the middle of the day, this is a symptom of a larger problem. And so fatigue means so many things. It's one of the most nonspecific complaints that people will bring to their doctor. But there are things that you can do really from home to improve your energy and reduce the level of fatigue. But of course, there's also causes of fatigue that you really want to get looked at or meet with a, a practitioner to resolve. These are things like depression, thyroid disease, infections, things even like cancer could be causing fatigue. Also blood sugar abnormalities, things like diabetes or prediabetes. Many people have underlying blood sugar dysregulation and don't know that that's actually driving their fatigue. Eating a higher carb meal and then crashing afterwards, that food coma, if you will. Other reasons that you might want to see a practitioner is if the fatigue is due to anemia or low iron levels, or if you're dealing with something like sleep apnea or anemia, some of these recommendations today may be helpful, but they probably won't resolve the issue for you. So you would need to work with your doctor, get some lab testing run, and really figure out what's going on. There's also some medications that can cause fatigue. These are things like antidepressants, right? And depression, we know, can cause fatigue. Antihistamines, benzodiazepines, which are an anti-anxiety medication. Alcohol, which is technically a drug, but it really can affect your detox pathways and really lead to fatigue long-term. And then also beta blockers or blood pressure medications, because these can slow down your heart. So somebody's on a beta blocker, they're going to feel really tired when they try to exercise because their heart rate can't really get up to that higher level because of the medication. So let's talk about some of the options that I've seen really helpful. There's one peptide that really stands out here as far as improving fatigue, and that is, da da da, MOTC. So if you've heard of MOTC, M-O-T-S dash C, <laughs> this is a peptide that, it's a mitochondrial peptide. And when we think about fatigue, usually it's a mitochondrial issue. It's one of the things to address if we have fatigue happening, is how can we support these mitochondria, which are really dense in the muscle tissue, as well as the central nervous system, so the brain, the nerves, they have tons and tons of mitochondria, the heart, also because it's a muscle, has so many mitochondria. And the mitochondria are really where that energy is produced in the cell. It's the part of the cell that's the powerhouse. So if mitochondria aren't functioning up to par, we're going to experience fatigue. And so that could be for so many reasons. We're lacking in nutrients. We're not getting enough sleep. We're not properly recycling our cells or what's called autophagy. But working on mitochondria really improves fatigue, especially in many of these infection-related fatigue. So COVID long haulers, any sort of infectious cause or EBV, mono, where there's long-standing fatigue even long after the initial symptoms of this virus or this bacteria, this pathogen have passed. We can experience that fatigue and peptides and mitochondrial support can be really, really amazing here. We know that MOTSI is in higher concentrations in people who are centurions, specifically people who are in Japan who are centurions, which means they're living over 100 years old. And so it's found naturally in these individuals, but it really plays a role in producing energy in the cell, like we mentioned before. So MOTSI can rev up that production of energy in the cell, in the mitochondria, which can help power muscles, nervous tissue, right, brain function, mental sharpness. The other nutrient that I really love for mitochondria, it's not technically a peptide, but I actually inject it like a peptide 
subcutaneously under the fat tissue, similar to how you'd inject a peptide, and that's called NAD. Or the precursors like NMN, NR, nicotinamide riboside, those are also great options. There's different debates on which form is better, but I won't get into all of that on this video. Any sort of mitochondrial support with NAD, the precursors, nutrients like L-carnitine can be really helpful as well. L-carnitine really helps to shuttle those fatty acids that make up fat tissue into the mitochondria to be burned, like on a furnace, as energy. So it helps with the fat loss process as well, but utilizing that fat tissue for energy, which is ideally what we want to do. L-carnitine also has these anti-apoptotic, meaning it prevents cell death, uh, it has this antioxidant capacity, and it also has this anti-inflammatory capacity because it's helping the mitochondria to do a better job. We know that we can actually reduce fatigue. We've seen this happen in studies by supplementing with L-carnitine or consuming more of those foods rich in L-carnitine, which is a lot of your red meat products. So protein-rich foods, your meat, beef, lamb, those sorts of things are going to be rich, very rich in L-carnitine. So that's one way to do it. You don't have to supplement with it. You don't even have to inject it. You can just consume it in your foods. And this is one of the reasons why I am not vegan and I never will be because we need those nutrients from those protein-rich foods like meat. L-carnitine is one of those essential ones for energy. So I've seen MOTC and L-carnitine be really helpful NAD is another option as well in those long hauler patients. And I will say in my personal experience, one of my favorite peptide combinations is the CJC ipamorelin combo. And those are growth hormones secreted GOG peptides. So they help your body make more of its own growth hormone, uh, which tends to decline as you age. You have high levels of that in your 20s, and then it drops, especially the closer you get to 50 or 60. Those levels levels are less than half of what they would be in your 20s. But I found a lot of benefit after I finished medical school and started utilizing those peptides. It's like they brought me back to life energy-wise. <laughs> and one of the reasons for that is because the CJC epimerlin really improves deep sleep. So deep sleep is where your body is doing a lot of cellular repair, restoration, working on proper production of hormones. It's rebuilding the mitochondria. It's just, there's so many things happening that we need deep sleep for. And so when you sleep better, your sleep's deeper and more restorative, you're going to feel better during the day. And so that cognitive sharpness was there for me, especially in practice. I was working in Hollywood in a clinic with a lot of stars right on the walk of fame where the stars are. And so I just felt so sharp when I started taking that peptide. So a lot of people say that that peptide combination really improves their energy. I've used that combination many times myself, cycled on it, cycled off of it. And that one helps ton with energy, better with age, uh, because you lose that growth hormone production. And it can improve that improving sleep, and then improving how you feel during the day. The other peptide that I also want to mention here is a peptide called thymus alpha one, or there's another peptide that's more available. It's called thymulin. And these are naturally occurring peptides, thymus and alpha-1 is something that your thymus gland, located right here, uh, naturally produces. And it helps with immune function. It helps with natural killer cells. It helps essentially fend off pathogens in the body. And so if you do have a past history of a lot of these chronic infections, maybe you had mono as a teenager, maybe Lyme disease, long-haul COVID, so many people have uh, symptoms as a result of that or any other chronic viral infection, so cold sores or HPV, any of those things, are, they're really attacks on the immune system. And so thymus and alpha-1 can help with improving the immune signaling, right? Your natural, your body's natural production of that peptide. And there is some research to show that thymus and alpha-1 can improve fatigue, it can reduce fatigue, I should say, and it can improve energy levels because if your immune system is so busy keeping that pathogen, that past exposure in check, it's not going to have a lot of energy for other things like helping your brain function and exercise and all the things that you would need on a daily basis. So I've seen that thymus and alpha-1 
Bartholomew Lin, if you can get that peptide, both of those can be really, really helpful for reducing fatigue, especially in the chronic infection category. There's probably other peptides that also really help here. So if any come to mind, please let me know. Many of the peptides work on improving cellular efficiency. So helping the cell to work better. Part of that is improving the mitochondrial function, right? So if the mitochondria were producing energy in the cell, everything else is going to be working better. We're going to get rid of waste products. We're going to be able to repair and restore the cell. And so when the cells are healthy, the tissue's healthy and the body's healthy and you feel good, right? So you have to start at the cell level. And that's really where peptides are working. Call it cellular medicine, which I really love super passionate about. One of the other, the last piece that I want to add here to improve energy, it's very passive, something that you can do if you're not feeling well, you're feeling sick, feeling tired, is just add in red light therapy. Now I have a red light therapy box that I sit in front of it, especially in the middle of the day, if you're feeling tired or even at night, it's been shown to boost your melatonin levels to help you sleep. In the morning, it's great too. It's not going to be sedating. Uh, It's really, really healthy for skin, right? It helps with collagen synthesis. And red light therapy has been shown to support mitochondrial function, so the energy production in the cell. And so because of that, it can help with reducing fatigue. And I will share the red light box that I use. There's so many different companies out there. Many people will talk about the EMF production of a red light box. I mean, we're inundated by EMF or electromagnetic frequencies. So sometimes you might hear about picking a box based on that. I'm not sure where this company stands as far as their EMF production. So let me know if you've read about that or if you know more about EMF and red light, but we're inundated by it. So phones, laptops everywhere. So, you know, I think, wow. What's a red light box for 15 minutes going to do to add to that? The red light therapy company that I use is called Red Therapy Co. And it's a pretty decent sized box. You can get like a whole wall unit if you wanted to, to stand right in front of it in the morning. And anecdotally, I will say I've seen this improve testosterone levels in men standing in front of the, the red light box in the morning for about 15 minutes, totally nude in front of the light, you know, a little bit distance away. Uh, but because it helps with mitochondrial production and helping stimulate mitochondria in the testes, it's going to help with boosting that natural production of that hormone, testosterone. I also like to use that red light box on my scalp to help with hair growth. There's these red light caps, which I don't think you need to go to that level. The, the box works just fine or on your face, neck, anywhere that you're injured, you're sore. Love the red light box and it's going to help with mitochondrial function, help improve fatigue helps support your energy. And of course, there's so many other factors that we could touch on like sleep and caffeine consumption and all these things that affect energy. But I just really wanted to focus on peptides and some of the more niche things that can improve here, can improve more energy. Thanks for following the channel. Know that I read every comment that's written below the videos and I respond to all of them. So please reach out, please let me know your thoughts and we'll see you in the next video.